Well, welcome back across Nevada to Face to Face. Is the Mob Museum an offer tourists can't refuse? Will they flock to the downtown Las Vegas attraction? Maybe not, says a critic. Join me now from the Taxpayers Protection Alliance, Drew Johnson. He authored a report claiming the Mob Museum is a taxpayer boondoggle. Welcome to the program, sir. Thanks for having me. Is this part of just a general objection to having these kinds of projects financed by public funds at all? Do you think they should be completely privately financed? Or is it something about the financing of the Mob Museum itself? Well, more than anything, it's the fact that government, by nature, you know, according to the Constitution, according to city charter, whatever, isn't in the business of of tourist traps. So it really is that more than anything. The, the problem you have here is you have people in Maine, people in Oregon, people who will never set foot in Vegas, much less the Mom Museum, paying for it uh, with their federal tax dollars. And then here in the city, I mean, my goodness, talk about high unemployment rates. Uh, you know, we need everything possible to make, uh, to grow jobs in, in... But that's true of anything. I mean, I pay federal taxes, right? You pay federal taxes. Sure. Some of that money is not going to come back to where we live. That's just the way the... I mean, that, that's, that's how it works, right? Well, here's, here's the, the heart of the matter. If this were a good idea, then a private investor, especially in Vegas, where everybody's looking to make a dollar off tourism, uh, tourism would have come in and put it into place, would have, would have start, started a mob museum. And of course, the thing at the Tropicana, a private investor did and got hosed. Absolutely. It, it did. L l let, me show you, let me show you part of what you had to write. And you wrote an opinion piece expressing your very strong views about this right. in the Review Journal. Let me read part of it. The Goodmans and other city leaders ignored the fact that if building a museum dedicated to the mafia in a seedy area of town was a winning proposition, investors would have funded the project long ago, as you just said. What about government's responsibility to revitalize, CD as you call, our wonderful downtown, or blighted areas? Does government not have a responsibility, or should they just stay out of it? Well, I don't think that uh, government should necessarily stay out of it completely, but the fact of the matter is putting a museum that's a tourist attraction in what is right now a pretty seedy area of town just isn't a winning proposition. As I said in the op-ed, you're not going to have people coming from the Strip, you know, crossing Fremont Street, going north of Fremont, just to go to this dopey museum. There are maybe a few... What makes you say that? Why are you so sure of that? Uh, because, th first of all, if the, uh, the, the museum at the Tropicana had been more successful, I'd say, okay, now's the, the hot time for, for mobsters. I mean, if you'd, you'd started this museum in 2001 when everybody was watching The Sopranos, maybe this would be a great idea. But the problem is... It's on is, in syndication. Don't you watch A&E? &E? They bleep and &E. it. They do bleep you it, can't but even still, see, it's the mob. It's you the can't mob. even see naked Listen, people. the mob... So, listen, <laughs> I, I've been critical of some of the financing schemes they've used, too. Uh, some of which you may not know about, I have to tell you about. But, but, but seriously, people do have a fact fascination with the mob. Uh, I, I, even, even though this is obvious, this never would have happened if you didn't have a former mob lawyer as mayor. There's right. no doubt about that. People do have a fascination with the mob, do they not? But, you know, 400,000, 300,000 people, whatever. It's interesting with the numbers that they project. You know, they said 600,000, as, as you mentioned in the last segment. And then when they realized that the operating uh, budget is going to be about $5 million a year, they thought, well, what's the lowest number we could break even at? And that's the number that are going to come. It, it was a little we, questionable. We, we've seen government do that before. All right, you have other criticisms, too. I'm going to talk to you about those when we sure. come back. Talk to talk more about the Mob Museum it's being paid for with tax money. Is that a good idea? We'll talk more about it when Face to Face returns. John Ralston wants to hear from you. Call 702-633-8748. Send an email to John at RalstonFaceToFace.com. Welcome back to Face to Face. Tomorrow, St. Valentine's Day Massacre is being honored right here in Las Vegas with what? the opening of the Mob Museum. Is it a good idea? Is it a good idea to finance it with tax money? Drew Johnson says no. He's here to talk about it. He wrote an op-ed for the Review Journal over the weekend. Let me show you some more of what you wrote in, in, in the op-ed. You wrote that while local taxpayers are on the hook for most of the public money spent on the museum, about 40 million all Americans share the cost thanks to 2.7 million in federal handouts. Under the guise of historic preservation, the museum's house, as I mentioned, an 80-year-old former federal courthouse, federal taxpayers funded a $1.9 million giveaway to the museum from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, a $532,043 Save America's Treasures Grant, and a $250,000 subsidy from the Institute of Museum and Library Service. Here's what kind of bothers me about uh, the, this, the financing is, is they just go and they grab whatever pot of money they, they can get. You probably, I don't even know if you know about this. They actually at one time when they couldn't sell the bonds went into the city sewer fund and grabbed an $80 million loan 
which the city is still paying back. To me, it would seem that if you if you can make the case for this, then find a revenue stream. Even if you don't disagree, even if you disagree, find one revenue stream. But cobbling together all these grants, some of which maybe have tenuous right application, that's where I think you have to be a little bit skeptical. You know, it's really funny. Oscar Goodman and the city leaders at the time when they first started this project, you know, five, six, ten years ago, uh, when the stimulus uh, happened, they said, you know, we're going to try to get some stimulus money. And Oscar went to the, to the you know, went to Harry Reid and, and his buddies in the Senate and said, and yeah, make this happen. Get me $55 million to build this mob museum. And there was such public outcry that they actually said, no, not only are you not getting it, but we're going we're gonna to change the regulations of the money we give out so that you can't get it and other museums can't get it. But to be fair, to be fair here, what, what happened back then, listen, I think it was ridiculous when they go after stimulus funds, but Mitch McConnell, who was doing anything to try to kill the stimulus, seized on, on this, and some of the Republicans seized on this to try to help kill the stimulus. So Harry Reid, being a smart politician, immediately said, this is off the table. So I'm not sure that's completely Well, that fair. tells you something about the project, though, that this is, this is really the, the port project of the decade. This is, of, I mean, you really since, think it's that bad? since the bridge to nowhere, this has been the most controversial port project nationally. I mean, if, if senators pick that one port project, the Mob Museum, to say, you know, the stimulus is bad, that should tell but you it's something. It, because it's, it's the stigma. That, that's why they were able to do it, and they were to show, why should we be using tax money to pay for it? I get that argument. But let's take the city's viewpoint. Let's play devil's advocate here. What if they're right? What if it does help revitalize uh, what you call a seedy area, a blighted area downtown? Isn't that a good thing? Isn't that a good investment for tax money? Again, if it were going to draw that many tourists, there would be a private investor who would put it there. That's the fact of the maybe, matter. Maybe maybe someone's just not doesn't have the kind of vision that Oscar Goodman have. I'm being I'm being serious. <laughs> I, I know you're going to laugh. I, yeah. I tried to say it with a straight face, but seriously, I mean, he has this vision. He was with the mob. He knows what the fascination with the mob was, uh, and so he thinks this is going to draw people down. It's going to change the nature of downtown. You heard Betsy Fretwell talk about the other other museums there. Uh, I hate this term, but I'm going to say it. They create critical mass downtown. They get people coming down there again. If it brings as many people as they think, I will run into the Mob Museum naked in two years. They will not bring 300,000 people a year. I mean, initially it might be, you know, success and balloons and all that, but this time next year, this time in two years, in five years, they're not going to break even. And as I said in my op-ed, they're going to come back to taxpayers and say, give us some money to help float this. The NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte is the same situation. Do you think running naked through there is going to bring tourists in there, sir? I don't think so. Uh, all right, but we have this on tape, you know that. That's fine. Right. As long as Oscar Goodman will do it if, if, if I'm right. We'll ask him about that, Drew Johnson. Pleasure having you on the program. Thanks for, Thanks for coming yeah. on. And on the next phase to face the